We play and call it work. Hey folks, Janine from Mini Wargaming here with another how-to video for you. In this video, we are going to continue painting this Death Guard Plague Marine, and we are going to paint the horns and skulls. As always, if you have suggestions for something you'd like to see in a future how-to video, please leave them down below in the comments. Now for this bone, I want to do a kind of darker aged bone effect. I'm going to start by base coating all of the bone areas and I'm going to use the color Scrag Brown. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of Lamian Medium. And this is just going all over the bone areas. There's a large piece that juts out on the shoulder pad. There's these skulls that are on the one fist. There's the two skulls that are on the backpack as well as the horn that's coming out of the side of the head. I'm going to leave the teeth that are coming out of the belt on the belly alone because I'm going to be doing those slightly different. So this is just an all over layer. I want to make sure that I get all of the sides right up to where it intersects with the armor pieces. After we finish with the scrag brown, our next color is going to be XV88. I'm also mixing Lamian Medium into my paint with this color and I'm going to do that for all of my colors just to make sure that they blend really well, they have a nice thin consistency and they flow onto the model. Now this is going to be covering up most of the bone area. I'm going to be painting it over about 80% of the area that I just covered with Scrag Brown. I really want to make sure that I concentrate this color more towards the top of all of these bone areas and I leave that darker brown in the shadows. And on areas like the skulls, I'm going to start to build up a contour and really exaggerate the dimension of the skull. So I'm going to be concentrating on the brow, the top of the head, the cheekbones, the top of the nose, and areas like that. Next, I'm going to take my XV88 and I'm going to mix it into the color Tau Light Ochre, about 50-50. And then I'm going to start pushing the highlight and making it even brighter. On this bone that's jutting out of the shoulder pad, I'm really going to be exaggerating the sculpted shape of the bone, how it's got this kind of streaky texture to it. So I'm going to be painting it in lines and really leaving all of those holes much darker. And then on the skulls, I'm again painting the forehead. I'm doing a thin line to transition kind of along the temple and then making it very bright on the cheekbones and the top of the nose as well as that forehead ridge. I'm painting slightly less of the model with each progressive highlight that I add, really building up that brightness towards the top where the sun would be hitting it the most. Next we're going in with pure towel light ochre and we're going to bump up the highlight even more painting a little bit less of the model, building that highlight towards the top, really bringing some life and brightness to this dark brown. As I paint each of these layers, it's really nice to have my previous color on the palette. So if it ever goes on too thick or there's a line and the colors aren't blending together, I can go back with my previous color and I can just quickly blend the transition between the two and really make it so that it's got a smooth flow from one color to the next. Our next highlight is going to be Ushapti Bone, mixed into our Tau Light Ochre at 50-50 again. And this is going to be our brightest highlight on the bone. So we're going to be really sparing about it. I'm just using a very small detail brush. I'm doing a very thin line on the areas that I really want to stand out. The very top of the cheekbones right underneath that eye socket. The very top of the forehead. The eyebrow ridges anywhere that I really want it to seem like that is the area that is catching the most light. As I paint this area on the shoulder pad, I'm just catching the very tip of this jutting bone. The same thing with the bone that's coming out of the head. I'm just catching the very end to make that seem a little bit sharper, a little bit brighter. And then I'm also going to outline this little kind of nurgly symbol that is sculpted into the back of these skulls on the backpack just because I want that to stand out since I'm not going to be painting it any different color and I don't want it to get lost because it's kind of a cool detail hiding back there. The last thing I want to do is just use a little bit of Ethonian camo shade 
And I'm just going to apply this very lightly into the shadows. It's going to mostly be in the places where the bone is transitioning into the armor and into any recessed areas. So for example, on the shoulder pad, there's all these ridges I can put that shade into. And then on the skulls, I kind of want to put it into the eye sockets and also the hollows of the temples. I want the front area right where it's transitioning from the cheekbone to the forehead. I want that area to remain bright, but the area right behind it I kind of want that to be a shadow so it seems like my temple highlight stands out even more. And after that Athonian camo shade has dried, this dark weathered bone on this plague marine is complete. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more how-to videos, I have another one where I paint kind of a weathered chainmail look on this plague marine in the mini wargaming vault in the link down below in the description. If you don't already have a vault membership, you can go ahead and click the link, sign up for a seven day free trial and get access to my tutorial as well as hundreds of other videos in the mini wargaming vault. So go ahead, click the link, start your free trial and happy wargaming.